Hey y'all, it's Stacy. Welcome back to the kitchen. Today we're making a dish that's one of those things that everybody in my family loves, but people outside of my inner circle, when I tell them what I'm making, they're kind of like, Stacy, you've lost your mind, or oh my gosh, I gotta try that. This is turnip green dip. Now, think spinach dip, like, like a spinach artichoke dip, but we're swapping that spinach for turnip greens because you know, any opportunity that we've got to add a little southern to something, that's what I'm gonna do. I've started by cooking seven pieces of bacon here just until it's crispy. I'm gonna take this out and drain this on some paper towels. Now you could use thick cut bacon. I just have regular bacon here, to honestly, because that was what was on sale this week. It was buy one, get one free. Look at me, I'm gonna make a mess here. Um, I'm gonna turn this heat down uh, because we're actually gonna use this bacon grease in our next step. Depending on how fatty your bacon is, you may need to drain some of that bacon grease away. You're gonna need to leave about two tablespoons in here. I think that's about what we got, so we're gonna leave that right there. I'm gonna turn that down. I'm gonna grab an onion. I'm gonna use a yellow onion, partly because like with the bacon, these were on sale this week, a white onion will work fine. Um, so just whatever you got. I'm gonna use half of this onion. So I've left that root in on, I've trimmed off the stem in, and we're gonna peel off this outside layer. That tends to be kind of tough, kind of fibrous, so we're not gonna use that. Now look, I'm not one of those people that's gonna tell you there's only one way to chop an onion. It's just not gonna happen. You know, you can use the method where you dice it like this and then you make the slices. All you're doing is if you think about these as concentric circles, is, is that right, concentric circles? I think that's right. Anyway, you get the idea. What we wanna do is we wanna cut these into uniform pieces. The reality is, is that if you get them close, when we put them in this bacon grease and cook them, cook, cook them down, it's not gonna make a huge difference. So do whatever method works for you. The other method is called the radial method. And essentially what you do is you cut in at an angle all the way around. And what we're doing is we're just cutting those layers into pieces. I'm gonna use the traditional method just because that's kind of what I do the most. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna slice in almost to that root end, trying my best not to cut all the way through. Then I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna turn it like this. I'm gonna put my hand flat with my fingers out of the way and we're just gonna cut into this a little here because again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to break up those circles of onion so that when we do this, we have nice uniform pieces. Now, my technique is not perfect. As a matter of fact, that wasn't a great example, but you get where I'm going with this. And like I said, as long as you get it into decently sized pieces that are relatively uniform, it's gonna work just fine. This half of an onion is gonna go into our bacon grease here. We're gonna cook this for about three minutes just until it gets soft. Let me rinse my hands off here. Give that a quick stir. Now for our turnip greens. I'm gonna use a 16 ounce package of frozen turnip greens. I find this to be the easiest way to do this because you can always get frozen turnip greens. The reality is is that if you can't get your hands on turnip greens, you could use collard greens probably or you could use spinach like we said before. Let's see if we can get this bag open. Like I said, this is a 16 ounce bag. Um, it, if you can find a 15 or 16 ounce bag, you know, it's not uniform in terms of size by brand. So something close to that is what you're gonna need to make this work. All right. Once those onions are translucent and everything's starting to smell good, we're going to add these turnip greens, after we make a mess everywhere, right to our pan here. Now this is gonna cook way down, just like spinach. You know, you buy a giant bag of spinach, you end up with a lot, like a single serving. That's what's gonna happen here with these turnip greens. Maybe not to the same extent, but these are gonna cook way down on us. Now I sometimes get the question, can I use fresh turnip greens? I think that you probably could use fresh turnip greens. What you would want to do though is to make sure you wash them really well, chop them down, and maybe even blanch them and drain them first because freezing them in this process starts to break those turnip greens down a little bit. And I think if you use fresh turnip greens right off the bat, 
they're probably not going to cook through enough um, because they're only going to be, this dip is only going to be in the oven for about 25, 35 minutes. So we want to make sure that we um, get everything cooked through. Let's see if I can clean up my mess here for a second. You know, I always get in trouble at my house because Heather is always telling me I'm such a messy cook. And the reality is, is that that's 100% true. All right, <clears throat> next to this, I'm going to add a 15 to 16 ounce jar of Alfredo sauce. This is gonna make this process so much easier. It's one of these great shortcuts that's gonna give lots of flavor, lots of creaminess without a lot of work. I think this jar, this is a 16.9 ounce jar. Don't tell my ori original recipe that I um, am cheating here a little bit. I'm also going to add an eight ounce block of cream cheese. Can you use like the Neufchatel, like the reduced fat cream cheese? Yes, but you're making a dip and you know, sometimes we just have to splurge. Go ahead and buy the full fat stuff. It's gonna help with creaminess too. But you know, if you wanna make this and you wanna lighten it up a little bit, you can absolutely do that. This is gonna go right into our mix here. As you can see, these turnip greens are starting to uh, fall a little bit. This mixture is all gonna help everything combine. Next, we're gonna add some seasoning to this. All right, I'm gonna add about a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm just guessing here, you know, this is one of those cook with your heart things. If you wanna measure, of course, I've got measurements for you. A quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper you could certainly use freshly ground black pepper if that's what you wanted to do. And I'm gonna use about half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Now, in this case, if you wanted to, you could certainly use a clove of fresh garlic that you mince up, but garlic powder works just fine in this case. All right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna let this simmer just a little bit. We want that cream cheese to melt completely and everything to get nice and melty. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop this bacon a little here. You could certainly just Crumble it with your fingers if you wanted to. Um, just a rough chop because this is gonna go in our dip as well. Add this right to the mix. Stir this together. Once this cream cheese gets all melted, and if, if it doesn't all melt completely, that's totally fine. We're gonna put this in a 350 degree oven for 20 to 25 minutes, just till it's nice and bubbly around the edges. Turn that off there. Grab this. Now, one thing I will mention too is, if you start this in an oven proof skillet, you can finish it in the skillet. Otherwise, you can transfer this at this point to a two quart baking dish that you've sprayed with nonstick cooking spray and cook it that way. Either way works fine. I think it looks kind of cool to keep it in the cast iron skillet like this. So when I do it at home, this is typically how I do it. Again, 350 degrees, 25 minutes, we'll be right back. All right, so it's been about 20, 25 minutes and you can see that this is nice and bubbly. Nothing like making a little racket. All right, to this, I'm going to add about a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese. And um, this is one of those things too where you just kind of measure with your heart. Um, but if you like to be precise, just grab you a third of a cup measure and sprinkle about a third of a cup of Parmesan cheese right on top of this. This is just plain old out of a green can. If you wanna be fancy, grate your own. If you wanna use um, another type of Parmesan cheese like Par Parmigiano Reggiano, I know I just butchered that, just ignore me. Um, this is gonna go back in the oven under broil this time for about five minutes. Now, the thing about broiling anything is you really need to watch it. I like to be able to crack the door of the oven when I broil because it's gonna allow some of that heat to escape. But the thing about it is that some ovens won't allow you to open the door like that. It actually won't broil unless it's closed. You can see mine is switched back. So keep a close eye. This is gonna broil for about five minutes. Um, just watch it really carefully. And once it's got a nice toasty golden top on that Parmesan cheese, then we're ready to eat. 
All right, so we've given this about five minutes in the oven. It's one of those things where when you're broiling stuff, you just have to keep a watchful eye on it. It's all golden brown, nice and bubbly. And the cool thing about this is that you've got some options when it comes to serving. You could use tortilla chips, you could use corn chips, you could use vegetables, or you could be like me and serve it with something a little different. I mean, it is turnip green dip, so I love to serve it with pork skins. It's unusual, for a lot of folks it's a little shocking, but once you taste it, you see just how delicious it is. Now, this just came out of the broiler, so, but I can't not try this. So, a big scoop like this on a pork skin, it's super delicious. Folks, you can find this full, really easy recipe on my website at southernbite.com. Just hit that search bar and type in turnip green dip. Y'all enjoy. It's so good.